Welcome back, everybody. This is an update on the 5 p.m. advisory, as there's several noteworthy changes to make you aware of. First and foremost, as of 5 p.m., the maximum sustained winds are now up to 100 miles per hour, which makes it a Category 2 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. You can see the satellite imagery is really starting to build out and get impressive, indicative of a storm that is still strengthening as it moves off towards the western tip of Cuba. Also, the movement now north-northwest versus northwest, so it's starting to make the turn that we've been talking about more towards the north. You can see that playing out on the cone graphic. Not a lot of changes on the forecast track itself or the forecast reasoning. But I do want to make you aware of up, uh, updates to the warnings. Specifically, this red area here is now a hurricane warning. So the hurricane warning is now in effect from Inglewood to Ancloak River, including Tampa Bay and the Dry Tortugas. The hurricane warning remains in effect for the western tip of Cuba. So hurricane warning now. The warning is different from a watch. That means conditions are expected generally within 36 hours. The other thing to note is our warnings trigger cell phone alerts. Many of you may have gotten or may get a message on your cell phone that's in reference to this warning. The other changes with respect to storm surge, portions of the storm surge watch area have also been upgraded to a storm surge warning. Remember, warning means conditions expected somewhere within the warning area. So this area here that is in brighter pink, which is the Anclote River southward to Flamingo, including Tampa Bay, are now under a storm surge warning. Similar to a hurricane warning, this warning also triggers your cell phone to go off. So you may have gotten two alerts. For some of you, you may have gotten two alerts. That is to denote the hurricane warning and the storm surge warning. This is the reason why we're trying to uh, push the message with respect to storm surge. A significant storm surge event is, is quite possible for portions of the west coast of Florida, very, very vulnerable to storm surge owing to uh, how shallow the shelf waters are out here in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. This is a new graphic, so I want to help you uh, understand it. Uh, the yellow areas are indicative of, of surge up to six feet. Uh, so specifically two to four in the Keys, three to five over southwest portions of Florida, four to seven for Charlotte Harbor, five to eight in and around Inglewood, and then topping out indicating a peak surge potential of 10 feet in Tampa Bay. And remember, I'm six feet tall. That's four feet over my head. The potential exists. The, um, it, the, we also added a storm surge watch. This is a new addition for northeastern Florida, including the St. John's River. Now, why are these areas not been upgraded to a warning yet? It's just too early. They could perhaps be upgraded to a warning at a later time, but it's too early from a timing perspective to upgrade them. I want to end with a lot of you are probably under evacuation or hearing about evacuation orders. If you don't know if you're in an evacuation zone or if an evacuation order impacts you, you can go to floridadisaster.org slash info. And there's two links in here, one to see if you are in an evacuation zone or which one you're in, and then this one to see what existing evacuation orders have been issued. That is it from the National Hurricane Center with your 5 p.m. update on Hurricane Ian.